I used to say, um, okay, well tell me about a time that you had a disagreement with a customer that you were able to work out. That's not right. Open-ended outcome. Because we want to know, we want them to tell us, were they able to get through it? human factor, your people will make all the difference too. So what we found is that this method of motivation-based interviewing really helps us to identify the, the kinds of people that we want working for us. It takes into consideration three things, skill, attitude, and passion. So do they have the minimum competence to do the thing we want them to do? Are they able to overcome obstacles? Because there will be obstacles. And you want to know how good are people at this at, and solving problems. And then what's their actual enthusiasm for providing service? And so I recommend that you read it, but effectively it says, in the interview, ask about a specific time that they faced an obstacle and then give them an open-ended outcome. What I learned from this was I used to say, um, okay, well tell me about a time that you had a disagreement with a customer that you were able to work out. That's not right. Open-ended outcome. Because we want to know, we want them to tell us, were they able to get through it? If we only talk about the time that they did something successfully, we don't necessarily have a complete picture as to how they're going to answer. So here are some cool questions. Tell me about a specific time when you, is always the opening, and then had to deal with an irate customer. Doesn't say made the customer happy, says had to deal with them. And they might launch into a story that tells you exactly what kind of person they are. Oh, I had this one lady, she was a bitch and she blah blah. Okay, nice, thank you. Tell me about a specific time when you were working on a team and one of the members was not pulling their weight. This is a fantastic question because it's not saying you were leading the team. If you're leading the team, you have a responsibility to take action. This says you were working on the team and one of the members wasn't pulling their weight. Well, I was afraid to say anything because I thought my supervisor would th think I was a tattletale and I didn't want to do anything. Eh, you know, I pointed them out and I reported them. Eh, um, or, you know, well, it seemed like that she was having a problem doing this and so I went and I told her blah, blah, blah and I helped, her. that's the person, right? And then last but not least, tell me about a specific time when you had a coworker that you had a disagreement with, right? You're really, triggering in them specific memories that they can access and tell you were they able to achieve the outcome in those situations that you would want them to achieve for your customers. Okay, exercise. If you will find this in your books, this is the customer experience elevator. It should be relatively near the things that you were filling out. This is something that I got from Brian Chesky who is one of the co-founders of Airbnb. And um, I, I was listening to an interview that he did with, um, on a podcast called Masters of Scale, which I highly recommend that you listen to. And he said, the way that we improve our customer experience is this. He said, start by writing a five-star review of your product or service. When you're done, you should recognize that this is the best possible customer experience that anyone who does business with you can have. It was literally a five-star experience. And he said then, when I know what that is, we say, well, what if, that, what if it could be a 10-star experience? Let's take, throw caution and money to the wind and say, if we could make this a ridiculously great experience, what would it be? And the answer in his case was, they would fly in on a jet, they would be greeted as if the Beatles had landed, there would be a huge crowd, there'd be a marching band with elephants and parades, the mayor would be there to give them the key to the city, they would walk down a red carpet, get into uh, an amazing Rolls Royce limousine and be chauffeured to the place, they would be offered a glass of Dom Perignon or your favorite kind of champagne when they arrive and uh, be exposed to all of the great things. The person who is the host would sit down and say, here's all the things that you should do. I've, I've got all these different options for you, etc." That's not possible, right? 
That's the 10 star crazy experience. And then what they do is they say, okay, let's now look at the 10 star experience, but say, how could we actually make some of this stuff happen? And when you do that, it's kind of fun because there are actual things that start off as crazy, crazy that maybe a different level of you could actually do to improve the experience. And so I want to go through this. This is a, um, a two-step exercise. The first step, I want you to write a five-star review for your business or service that you have right now, the best possible. And when you're done writing that, I want you to write, what would happen when you got a one-star review? Where do you know that you've dropped the ball before? What could happen? This is a little inversion thinking here, right? What's the one star experience? So I want you to take, um, take about five minutes, write the best possible and the unacceptable, and then we'll go from there.